All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us. Another episode of Catching Up with Jacob. And Jacob Prash, how are you this evening? Blessings in Jesus. I'm well. How are you? Praise the Lord. We're doing well, brother. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you as always. Uh, you're on the other side of the Atlantic. Well, David's further out than, than that. David, how are you this morning? Uh, I'm awake. I can tell you that, you know, long trip yesterday, getting to the Philippines. Got a short break here before I catch up with Jacob uh, in person in a All right. couple. Very good. Thank you, brother. Uh, Jay, how are you this morning? Doing well. Uh, good to be here with you guys. Amen. We got to pray for you, brothers. You're heading out to Jamaica this weekend for uh, some preaching over there. So praise God. We got to we got to pray for you and ask everyone to keep Jay in prayer as he delivers the word uh, this week in Jamaica. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, all the way on the other side. Well, this uh, so far, the other side is closer to the Pacific side to me. Uh, Davey, how are you this morning? Doing good. Thanks, dear brother. Good to be with you guys. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, it's good to have two guys almost on the same, same time zone, Davey and David. Almost in the yeah. same time zone, so that'd be good. <laughs> Saturday morning, while well, we're here languishing on Friday, you know, and uh, Friday evening for Jacob. Uh, any announcements, guys, before we get started? Uh, Jacob, you're uh, are you speaking this weekend? And then I know you're coming out to the West I'm Coast. Doing an online, I'm doing an online teaching for Issachar Ministries, formerly known as Prophecy Today Magazine, here in Great Britain, and it's by subscription through Issachar Ministries. But people can go online and subscribe to it. It'll be 3.30 p.m. on, I'm sorry, 4 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, this Sunday. The following week, Saturday, I'm in New York City at the Church of the Open Door, 7 p.m., 7, East 7th Street and 3rd Avenue in the East Village, opposite Cooper Union. 3rd Avenue and 7th Street, Church of the Open Door. And then the following day, we'll be in Baltimore, Lord willing, also at the Church of the Open Door in Baltimore, on Sunday afternoon at 3.30. The following week, I am think I am in um, California at Tabor. That's and right. then there right. will we'll be with Pastor Rob Finberg in Maui. And then from there, uh, on to New Zealand, Australia, and the Far East. But coming up, it will be New York and Baltimore. Um, Tabor near Los Angeles, and then on to Hawaii, then across the Pacific all the way. So if you're any of those places, we'd love to see you. If, yeah, if you're in Southern California, we have a Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. on the 28th. Come see Jacob, say hi to him, and uh, and pray for him because he's got a busy schedule out, not only to yes. the Pacific, but he's going to be uh, Australia, New Zealand in May. So, boy, lots lots to do. And with the way the world's going, uh, Jacob, God's, uh, people need to hear God's word. God's people need to be encouraged, exhorted, and, uh, and, and I pray you do that. I pray you could do yes. that. The New Zealand and Australia dates will be posted on the Moriel website, hopefully within a week. Hopefully yeah. within a week they'll be be posted. Yeah, so people are excited about that. I've been hearing a lot about that. I'm hearing it here about Australia being excited and New Zealand being excited about you coming over. So there's some excitement there. Uh, David, you're still in the Philippines, some ministry there. I uh, I arrived uh, I arrived yesterday evening late. Uh, went to bed pretty quickly so I could get up and be with you guys. So yeah, I've got a break you. for a little bit before travel starts. I, I am looking forward to it. So more preaching, more teaching. Well, it's what the church yeah. needs to do. Preach, teach, disciple, baptisms. And, uh, and we're doing all that and we're doing all that and we continue to do it. So uh, I think that's it for the announcements. Uh, was there anything else? I think that was it. So um if there's anything please uh you know we'll let you know the podcast schedule is out i think we have the the, the ticker going on and you can, guys can see it well we want to welcome those who are watching live those who will watch later of course we welcome you in the name of the lord and uh we've got some great subjects today that we want to talk about uh specifically dealing with what's going on in israel in the middle east and in the church as well and uh, we want to keep uh, keep you guys informed that keep Morial, keep other churches that are faithful to preach God's word and prayer to our church in Devor, uh, Southern California, Church of the Open Door, New York, other ministries that are faithful. Keep them in prayer. The attacks are relentless because we're pursuing holiness and righteousness and God's word. And um, and the enemy doesn't like that. And it, it will use people that um, to try to thwart the plan of God. Well, of course, they can't. God's always God always wins. 
and we continue on pressing. So, Jacob, we're excited that you're going out uh, preaching and teaching. So is David. So is Jay. So is Jay. And we got to pray for Jay, uh, especially. Uh, Jay, you're going to be gone for a week, right, in Jamaica? Is that, is that the plan? Yes, I will be in Jamaica from the 14th to the 22nd. And I am preaching on April 20th in Kingston. All right. uh, well, yeah, the uh, the topic uh, is uh, biblical biblical identity in the latter days. Wait, no, in the, in in the end times. Yeah, there we go. Biblical identity, boy, there's so much confusion about that, and and we got a little bit of that at the end of our our, our, our episode today about uh, gender confusion in the churches and, and and what's going on there. But uh, thank you so much, Jay, and uh, just to let everybody know that not only. When we're on here, it's not only just being behind a computer, but we do take it to the street. We do take it to different places. Jacob travels, David travels, Jay travels, Davey's on the road. Uh, at times, at least he's been on the road with me when I was in Australia. And um, and I just came back from a, a, a short trip. So we it's not just going to behind a computer, but we do take it to where people are at today. And hopefully people can log in and watch. Yes, sir. S sorry, Marco. Uh, I was muted. So let me repeat. Oh, you were <laughs> muted. I'm so sorry. Jay, go ahead. Repeat it again. No problem. Uh, I am going to be in Jamaica from the 14th through the 22nd. And my um, my subject of my matter on the, the 20th will be uh, identity, biblical identity in the end times. So Praise God. Yeah. So much confusion on yeah, that. Man. So much confusion. Have a good time. Yeah. Jamaica. The travel advisory is uh, do not go right now to Jamaica. Yeah. So is that, uh, is that what it is? Do not go. Oh, it, I'm I'm praying about it, but yes, it is. Do not go right now. Okay. So keep Just don't come back a Rasta. You know what? <laughs> don't come back a Rasta. All right. Promise you, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those who are watching live on live stream, you know, we welcome you. We're on, on different platforms, including uh, including our own and including, um, you know, Facebook and YouTube, which a lot of people watch there, uh, but also on Rumble. And uh, if you want to ask questions, get to Rumble. And we're going to have questions for Jacob at the end. And maybe the topics that we're going to talk about today is going to produce a lot of questions. So uh, I guess it's a good time to start. So let, Jacob, let's catch up. First of all, I want to congratulate you, Jacob, Jay, David and Davey. You guys, apocalyptic warriors, you guys survived the 2024 eclipse. Yes. And I want to give you guys a round of applause. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. I don't know how you did it, Jacob. You withstood all these terrible things that happened. Uh, tell us how you did it, Jacob. Well, let's just say once again, the crackpots were on parade. Crackpots on parade. The usual the chorus line of crackpots speaking the same kind of rubbish. What happened on the 8th of April? Well, exactly and precisely what we expected, exactly and precisely what we predicted. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nobody sacrificed any red heifers. World War III did not begin, and the swallows did not return to Capistrano if you live in Orange County. Nothing happened. We said nothing would happen. The question is, what will be the next bogus scenario these people hook up? Well done, J.D. Farrag, as usual. Well done, <laughs> Rachel, whatever your name is. Baxter, well, yeah. Baxter, well done, Rachel Baxter. You know, well done, Robert Breaker and company. It's always the same people and the same kind of people following them. The question is, why does Satan raise people like this up? Because of the boy who cried wolf. When something of real prophetic significance transpires, people will just think it's kooky Christians making kooky predictions again. People will not believe there's a wolf when there really is one because of these crackpots who are always crying wolf yet people will still follow them people will still listen to them anybody who listens to jd farrick or to miss baxter or to robert breaker are as wacky as they are and they are co-equally culpable because all of these people have been proven to be false messengers they're not from God. What will it be next? They'll come up with something. 
But this we know. When the real thing happens, the faithful people of God, who are led by his spirit and grounded in his word, will know it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Are any of these pastors going to recant any of this, Jacob? I think they're going to recant. I doubt it. To apologize. No, 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 they, they, do the, they do the J.D. Fabric two-step. They get a broom out of the closet, and they roll up the rug, and they sweep it under and wait for the next load of rubbish coming down the pike. They do the J.D. Fabric two-step is what they do. Mm. Marco, I um, on Twitter and everything, there was not just mainline people, but there was dozens and dozens of other people that, you know, it predicted CERN was going to open up the portal to hell right. and all the angels, you know, Revelation 9, uh, just on and on. Just uh, one pastor predicted uh, the seven seals would be open, you know. That's so, right. That's right. Somebody and, did. And it Somebody just was goes. Saying. And so now you don't just have the top guys, but you have dozens and dozens of people predicting more and more events, yep. not based on the Bible. But what they do is they bring in enough of the Bible to make it look bad. And that's what's yeah. really bad. I I can't tell you how many people I said, look, let you, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't do this if, if you have any love for Jesus and his word, you know, because it's it's what happened is it makes us look bad and it makes them look bad. And and I noticed how everything went quiet. I mean, just it was like dead silence on uh, the eclipse after yes, it was. Over. That's right. I mean, that's right. Nothing yeah. anywhere. You could, I couldn't find anything on it. They might have even deleted some of their clips. Some of, yeah. Well, we we have we have them as proof that they did say that. In fact, uh, if people want to go watch the video, it's it's on our, our on Devore Truth channel. It's also Memorial's channel. We made a video of just a few. It was just too numerous to to put together clips and clips and clips. Uh, and you can you can watch it. it I think we're going to put it on the chat uh, on yeah. the link uh, for the for people to watch it. If you want to watch. Some of the, I was there in 2017 when the eclipse was on the West Coast, and we we see the 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 shadow was over here in Oregon and in its totality. And uh, although there were people at the time claiming it was because it was close to Rosh Hashanah and all the stuff, uh, it was this time was a lot more. So I see sort of the waves come in, and they take a few people with them, and then a bigger wave comes in, and it takes more people with them, and then 2024 for sure. This is. Probably the biggest one, and and unfortunately, uh, Jacob, David, and and, and Jay and Davy, um, now they're uh, some people are calling for the rapture to happen at Pentecost, which is coming up in May, and uh, it, it's just going to be on and on. Full moons in twenty twenty five. I'm sorry, not full moon, blood moon coming up in May in twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six, and it, it's just on and on and on, um, like an onslaught of signs and wonders. And there's always going to be, unfortunately, people that predict things that don't happen, but people yep. still follow them. People yep. still follow them, and perhaps yeah, I don't know the difference between signs and wonders and just ordinary phenomena in the in the heavens. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Go ahead, Jay. Perhaps you know the reason why we're not hearing from them is because you know maybe they were raptured. Oh, <laughs> oh personally, them. personally, yeah, personal rapture. Okay, I, I think I didn't we need to all that. chip in, Marco. We need to all chip in and buy J.D. Farrag a new broom for his birthday. The one he has is being worn out. <laughs> it's, it's all worn out from, from sweeping false predictions under the rug. You know, I'm not saying J.D. did this, and and, and, and please don't, don't think I, I was saying that J.D. actually did this part, but the one that really, really upset me was the fact that th th they were fear-mongering. Some of these ministers were fear-mongering so much that they were saying the rapture is going to happen. The seals are going to be open. It's it's going to be the end of the age. Yes. And then, but in the same sentence, but donate to my ministry. Let's go on tour <laughs> to Jerusalem. <laughs> uh, we're going to raffle a TV. We're going to raffle a yeah. TV. Uh, uh, that was my favorite one. They had a, <laughs> when they had the, um, the, the drawing of a raffle, you could have won two, um, one of two um, big, uh, what do you call a widescreen TVs or something like that. The eclipse. So if it's the end of the age, you're still gonna have to, you know, gonna have to give and and, and participate in the raffle. That's what got me, and, and I just I, I just stopped listening at that point because I was like, these, these absolutely, you know, from seals being open to, but you know, Jacob, it's it sounds as ridiculous as Sheila Jackson Lee saying that the moon is made out of 
Is, is mostly that what gas. Said? Mostly gas. Uh, can we play that? Is that okay, Jacob? You wanna you wanna comment on this one? It's, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll do this as my weekly commentary. And sometimes you've heard the word full moon. Sometimes you need to take the opportunity just to come out and see a full moon is that complete rounded circle, which is made up mostly of gases. And that's why the question, the question is why or how could we as humans live on the moon? Uh, the gas is such that we could do that. The sun is a mighty powerful heat. And it's almost impossible to go near the sun. The moon is more manageable. And you will see uh, in a moment, or not a moment, you'll see in a couple of years that NASA is going back to the moon. Wow. Wow. She is a congresswoman. She is a lawyer. <clears throat> and um, she is a representative of 18th Congressional District in Texas. Now, that is a very much a shame because originally I was from Texas. Jay lived in Texas, originally from Texas as well. What a shame. Jacob Prash. Well, first of all, this is DEI Affirmative Action in Practice. This is what happens when you let somebody go to law school who doesn't know how to read a scientific article. <laughs> the moon is, is mainly made of, of gas, of vapors. This is what she's telling high school students. Now, and, and the sun is almost impossible. It is completely impossible. This woman has a subhuman level of intelligence, a subhuman level of, I am not exaggerating, this woman has a subhuman level of intelligence. She's a complete and utter imbecile. Now, of course, people who vote for her will say, you're a racist, you're a racist. No, she's an imbecile. You had a black American rocket scientist, a mathematician, mathematical expert in ballistics, a rocket scientist who became a very successful businessman. And the black liberal establishment hated him. His name was Herman Cain, a rocket scientist. That ridiculous woman was on the House Science Committee and on the House Aerospace Committee. And she doesn't know the moon is not made of gas and that it's impossible to get near the sun. This is a complete moron. But we'll have the moron. We'll vote for the imbecile. We'll vote for the affirmative action parasites instead of for the black rocket scientist who knows what he was talking about. You have the greatest pediatric brain surgeon in the world, the only one to successfully separate encephalophagous Siamese twins at John Hopkins University, Dr. Ben Carson. Shouldn't he be voted for and put on a science committee? No, no, give us the imbecile. We don't want a black brain surgeon. We don't want a black rocket scientist. We want a moron. This is why black America, this is one of the main reasons why black America will never advance socioeconomically. Anybody who is stupid enough to vote for a moron must be a moron. Some of the most intelligent people in the United States are black Americans. The greatest social political economist, Dr. Thomas Sowell, but they hate him. They hate Candace Owen. They hated Herman Cain. They hate Ben Carson. We don't want those people. They're intelligent. They must be white. They must be Oreo cookies. Give us a moron. Give us somebody like us. We want to be stupid and we're going to vote for people who are stupid. That will only keep black America down. Some of the smartest people in this country in America are black. You could put a rocket scientist on the House Committee for science or for aerospace. A brain surgeon, the greatest pediatric brain surgeon on the planet. No, no, we don't want them. 
give us an affirmative action DEI parasitic imbecile. What is wrong? Anybody who would vote for somebody like that must be as hopelessly stupid as she is. Mm -hmm. Tell Whoopi Goldberg I said so. Thank you, Jacob. You, you know, I think of uh, somebody like Kathy Barnett, who ran for the the, the Senate in in, uh, in Pennsylvania. Incredibly smart, incredibly a business incredibly. owner, MBA, BA, rent corporations, financial sector, financial district. She knows her stuff. Yet they they don't like her. Why? She's anti-abortion. She's anti-homosexuality. You know, you know, gay marriage stuff. She is not liberal. And they despise her for all those things, yes. even though she's very much part of the black community, very much loves the black community. They despise her. What are you going to do? If black people are going to persistently vote for the party of Jim Crow and slavery, they're always going to remain what they've always been, the low man on the totem pole. Well, do you think they're waking up to this? Because we're seeing some are more and more speaking out. Black voters are coming over to Trump. And is it a, is it a day too late, Jacob? Look, there may be some progress in that direction. There may be some. But just look at the popular narrative. Under two terms, I've said multiple times, after two terms of Barack Obama, the average black American family's income went down by $900. After eight years, after two terms, after 11 months of Donald Trump, it went up by $1,000. And you had record low Afro-American unemployment and record low unemployment among black youth plus prison reform. Yet they hate Trump, but they like the party of Jim Crow and slavery. If people vote for their own death, you can't save their life. Jacob, let's talk about another uh, another thing that's happening, and, and it's 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 very explosive, no pun intended, and what's going on in, in Israel. And it's been six months, almost to the day, 188 days to be exact, since the attack on October 7th in Israel, where Hamas uh, not only massacred Jews, took hostages into Gaza. The war began. They were trying to get the... The, the hostages, Hamas would not surrender. Hamas will continue to attack. They, they they ramped up the propaganda against Israel. So we're still sitting on this day with no very little hostages back. The war is ramped up. Uh, they're, they're still, Hamas is still fighting, does not want to negotiate. And it's the end of the month of Ramadan a couple of days ago. Biden's putting pressure on Israel not to go into Rafah and, and, and there's no promise of releasing the hostages. Fatah's fighting against the uh, against Hamas. U.S. intel is warning of a possible Iranian uh, strike on Israel very, very soon, if not this weekend, if not today, uh, being the, the 12th, uh, Friday the 12th. It, it's confirmed Iran is going to retaliate because of the building that got blown up next to the embassy in Damascus. Uh, uh, Jacob, what's your take on this? This is some critical stuff. That we're reaching critical point here, and I don't know if we're going to reach a point of no return, but... Uh, the, the thing of 1973 keeps going in my head in terms of how far this has gone and how critical the hour is. It is very much like 1973 in multiple respects, first and foremost of which was the surprise attack, which happened in 73 and happened again last year in October. This is for sure. But we have statistically disproven lies of 32,000 killed. And the popular media ignoring the fact that of those Gazans who have been killed, they've been killed because Hamas has used them as human shields. Yet Israel is accused of genocide for firing back on terrorists who murdered 1,400 people, who beheaded children, took hostages, raped women, and fired barrage after barrage after barrage of rockets at Sderot, at Ashkelon, at the southern suburbs of Tel Aviv, at Ashdod. How dare you fire back? How dare you invade Gaza 
after we abducted hostages, you come to look for them. And the media is calling Israel the guilty culprit. We have had savage barbarians who never should have been given a green card protesting in the streets of American cities saying death to America. Thank you, George Bush, for not doing what you should have done after September 11th. Thank you, Barack Obama. Thank you, Joe Biden. You're rolling out the red carpet for people who hate us. You're creating a fifth column. These acts are tantamount to betrayal of the nation. Those people on a good day should be arrested and deported. If they are jihadists, if they believe in Sharia instead of the U.S. Constitution, they should be denationalized for making immigration to America on a false pretense. If they riot, they should be dealt with by a riot act. Disperse or be shot. They should be shot in the streets of America if these savages come to our country and riot in America saying death to America. They should be shot in America because they are foreign invaders. They are terrorists. Anybody who supports terror is as bad as a terrorist and should be treated as a terrorist. But not when you have a Barack Obama or a George Bush or a Biden. Mr. Trump was not perfect, but he warned that these people should not be allowed to immigrate to the United States. We needed to stop Islamic immigration until we can vet the radicals from the moderates. And they called him a racist. Now you've got these people saying death to America. I would say death to them. Get out of the country. And if you don't get out of the country, you'll be liable for the consequences. Yeah, you had Chuck Schumer on the Senate floor just weeping and crying because we would not let radical Muslims into the nation because Trump said we gotta we gotta at least stop it and vet them. And he comes up. Chuck Schumer is Jewish. Am I right, Jacob? I would take Chuck Schumer, Desi, Debbie Washerman Schultz. I would take Jerry Nadler. I would take Adam Schiff. I would take Blumenthal and Governor Spritzer. I would take these left-wing Jews, handcuff them, and hand them to Hamas. I guess we can trade them for the hostages. That, that would be a good Correct. trade, wouldn't it? I would that trade would them good... for the hostages. Do what you want with them. Just give us the hostages. I trade them for a bag of chips, but I'll definitely take the hostages. I mean, I, I don't know how worth they are, but th th this is it's pathetic. It's pathetic to see Schumer that now he cries out that, that well, there's too much anti-Semitism, he says now. He allowed it to happen for all these, of all these years. Oh. Of course he did. But, but ask Davey what's happened in Australia. Yeah, what happened in Australia, Davey? I, I've heard about it. Jacob mentioned it in, in, in our pre-recording. Can you can you talk a little bit about that? With the Australian, uh, sorry, with the Jewish Community Council of yeah. Australia? Yep. Yep. The Jewish Council of Australia is pretty much basically pro-Palestinian. It, it's kind of like it's, I was just looking wow. at the Twitter account before after what Jacob was telling us. Um, it's absolutely disgusting. This week we had a uh, Jewish uh, uh, a Jewish academic at the, I'll, I'll make sure I get the right university. I think it was the Mel Melbourne University. He was shut down. He was uh, yeah, at the Uni of Melbourne. He was uh, Professor Tel Shima, an aerospace engineer. Um, they shut him down. He wasn't allowed to speak. There wasn't a word from the Jewish Council of Australia, wow. but uh, the Jewish Council of Australia stood up for Dr. Abdel Fattah, who is a pro-Palestinian voice, uh, demanding that he have the right to speak. Uh, so the Jewish Council of Australia is just kind of so pro-Palestinian, it's not funny. So the Jewish community here in Australia is divided. And I do know, I have heard uh, by the grapevine, a lot of the Jewish community here in Melbourne is living in fear at the moment. Uh, we've had our government turn on them. Penny Wong has sold us out. Penny Wong has sold Israel out. It's sold the Jewish community here out. So is that Anthony Albanese. So they're not getting any support protection from the government. 
but even in, amongst their own now, there's division amongst their own now. So um, keep the Jewish community in prayer here. I think uh, they're very, uh, I, I, look, I, I do work with some people uh, who are Jewish. They're wanting to return to synagogue for that sense of community and, and you know, support. But even amongst their own, they're not going to get that support. That there's that division there at the moment. Hmm. The stupidity of left-wing Jews. This is this is what's going on all over the world. I mean, when I talk to Davy about what's going said, on, why don't you just Australia. sew a yellow star on your jacket and pay your own half better outfits? That's what you're doing. Hmm. Some of them are waking up like Dershowitz. Some of them, like Alan Dershowitz. Most are just. Hopeless. Yeah. It, it, Jacob, go back to Iran. I want to go back to Iran because uh, th these are words that uh, Khomeini had talked about. Uh, it's a religious war. He, he he mentioned it at the end of his prayer for the end of Ramadan. And it says Israel will be punished. There will be an airstrike. Uh, do you believe this could be the beginning of proxy attacks? I mean, we've seen some attacks in, in Germany. There was another man in Sweden that was killed, the 39-year-old, by, by gangs. The, 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 that's how they've been reporting it, gangs. But you could imagine they weren't Irish nuns who attacked them. Uh, they were complete uh, uh, craziness at the, at the Spanish parliament saying that, that we should not support Israel, that we should support Iran. I mean, it, it, people have gone mad, but the, the, the reality is, it's, it's, do you believe Iran will launch a strike, a drone strike, to, to the degree that we're talking about, perhaps not a nuclear strike, but a drone strike, or activate Hezbollah during this time? My guess is they will do it by proxy. They are posturing. They will do it by proxy with some kind of feigned deniability. That is what I would expect. I don't think they would launch a full-out attack. That would force, because it's an election year particularly, it would force the United States not to restrain Israel, and Israel is ready. That is my sense. However, you're dealing with demonized madmen, and when you're dealing with demonized madmen, they're unpredictable. Yeah, that's right. That that that's my, that was my point. The um, the effect of Daniel ten. Can you can you talk a little bit about Daniel ten? Uh, the, Daniel this is in the Bible. This is prophecy. There's going to be a conflict involving Europe, represented by Greece and Iran. And Iran will, Persia, controlled by a demonic power that will become an existential threat to Israel's existence at the close of the age. There is no doubt that that is what is happening. When the peacock throne collapsed, in large part thanks to the incompetence of Jimmy Carter and the Shah, for all of his faults, was displaced and replaced not by Bonnie Satter, who didn't last, but by Khomeini, and the Mullahs took over. That principality of ancient Persia, that demonic power, came into its position, and it's been intent on destroying Israel ever since. This is what you're seeing happening now, and it's exactly what Daniel chapter 10 said is going to happen. There will be some kind of a conflict involving Europe, and Iran, or the West and Iran. This is for sure. The principality, the prince of Persia, will not succeed in destroying Israel, but it will not be for a lack of trying. Look at Daniel chapter 10, and you see it's a spiritual battle. These political and rhetorical and even strategic conflicts we see involving Iran are simply reflections of a spiritual battle addressed directly, prophetically, in Daniel chapter 10. That's right. Jacob, you always mentioned the, the, the reflection of heaven and earth and what's going on in heaven and it's it's on, on earth. And uh, you see it in the book of Zechariah. You mentioned it in the book of yes. Revelation. Uh, and, and so these, um, these spiritual battles, would you say they're, they're principalities, right? This principality yes. over, right. over Iran. Right. Uh, and I want to make that disclaimer because it's it's we're not talking about that you know C. Peter Wagner spiritual warfare stuff, the territorial spirits and all that stuff. The people get involved in that, but there are legitimate principalities over absolutely. Nation. But you know what else is happening? There's another battle in Iran. Although it 
is not a huge percentage of the population. It is significant. Despite unspeakable persecution, the churches in Iran are growing. Thank you. People are being saved and born again. Jacob, you hit God, it on the money. I wanted to ask you that. God yeah, I to ask. has a love for the Persians because of Cyrus and Darius. Mm. God has a love for the Persian people. The problem is not the Persian people. It is that the Persian people abandoned their own religion, which was Zoroastrianism. Right. And embraced the religion of their enemy, Islam. Mm -hmm. Islam was the religion of the Arabs who were the traditional enemies of the Persians. The Persians abandoned their own identity, as it were, in a religious sense, and took on the religion of their enemy. It's not the Persian people. It's the mullahs. It's yes. the demonic powers on back of Shia Islam. Yeah. I, I remember watching a video, and, and this was, uh, it was it was heartbreaking. These All these believers in Iran, true believers in Jesus, true believers in Yeshua, yes. that love Israel. Yes. But they were being punished on the street. They were being whipped on the yes. street, and then taken them to jail because they were preaching Yeshua on the streets of, 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 of Tehran. And Bangladesh, and mm. Indonesia, and Malaysia. I've been there and I've seen it. Mm. The uh, um, and we do need to pray for the believers in Iran because a lot of Christians are in prison. That this is part of the problem. Yes. And the uh, and the other one is a lot of women have come to Yeshua, come to Jesus, but are also yes. in prison. And of course, yes. you know, with the 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 the, the regime there, with uh, uh, Shia Islam and. Uh, how women are treated there, it's unbelievably cruel. You see the stupidity of, of Western women in England converting to Islam. It is unbelievable. Mm. I, yeah. I, Sinead O'Connor, she, she's dead now. Yeah. Um, now. She knows that Islam is not the truth. It's no yeah. more true than the Roman Catholicism she was brought up in. It's yeah. silly, ignorant, naive, undiscerning women. You know, I was reading uh, before we got on the program. I was reading about the uh, I forget his name. He's one of the Hamas leaders. Uh, he, he's sixty two years old now. Um, I forget his name. And he he just married a twenty year old for his seventh wife, for his seventh wife. And this is um, I think I think she's from Qatar or something like that. But this is how women are treated in in in, in no specific cases. It's general. It's it's true. That is nothing. Last week, I watched videos from Afghanistan. Thanks to Joe Biden, who handed the keys to Afghanistan back to the Taliban, got 13 Americans killed. Women are again being arrested and flogged in Afghanistan by the Taliban. But I watched yeah. little girls, one seven years old, one nine wow. years old, forced to marry a 70-year-old man. A oh, seven-year-old old man with a beard, and she's nine. Her father sold her for two thousand American dollars. Thank wow. you, Joe Biden. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got to think yeah, for kids. Lots, anyway, we'll I've leave seen it there. lots of videos of women being beaten, beaten, caned. It's if, if you remember, one of the reasons we went into Afghanistan was with the public execution, beheading of and stoning of women in the Olympic Stadium. And now the same videos and worse are showing up. Yeah, so. yeah, and little boys too. Don't forget the part that that that, yeah. that is uh, that is part of the, the the whole aspect of the, you know the boy dresses up like a little girl, dances around, and the men take the little boy and they you know they they take him oh. to their room and you know we'll leave it there, but. Oh with a strategic opportunity for China. Yeah. Yeah, that's very Biden. much so. That's Biden. Now, uh, Jacob, France, the UK, the US, uh, Russia, uh, as well as India, all uh, calling for travel restrictions to Israel. They want to evacuate their diplomats, especially France and the UK. Travel warning, especially here in the States, for uh, level four now. So it's gone up to level four. So uh, they're expecting something, and I don't know if it's going to be this weekend or not, but even the Gulf states, Qatar, Kuwait, are trying to keep the U.S. from using their bases. Yes. We have a picture of their bases uh, against Iran. So do you think in, in this case Biden is, is hand will be forced 
to defend Israel if there is an attack, a drone attack of some sort? It is an election year. He will betray Israel to the extent that he can, the way he's already betrayed Israel to the extent that he can, and the way that he's doing it presently. Um, this is for sure. The fact that it's an election year somehow restrains him to a degree. Mm -hmm. um, they are telling, for sure, the United States is telling Iran, don't do this. It's going to cause problems and it's going to hurt you. Um, nonetheless, Iran sees a weak leader. Remember, I, I, what, no matter what you think of Mr. Trump, had he been the president, Ukraine would not have happened. North Korea would not be test firing missiles over Japan again. <laughs> Afghanistan would not have fallen to the Taliban again. And the Gaza war would not have happened. All of this is at the feet of Joe Obama. The Russians, the Chinese, the North Koreans, and the Iranians see a weak, senile, corrupt the crowd. They know, they know that Obama is pulling the strings. Obama, who did nothing, nothing about Crimea of any substance, who drew the red line in Syria and when it was crossed, did nothing. They knew that Obama was a spineless, useless weakling. And he's the power on back of Biden? What do they have to fear? Nothing. Yeah, and Jacob, we're getting reports that about 15 missiles have been launched from southern Lebanon into Galilee. The uh, Iron Dome system is able to intercept them, of course, and uh, fired at Israel. Yes, it's just about a couple hours ago it happened. So we're getting reports now of the Patriot defense shooting down Iron Dome and Patriot air defense system shooting down more than 40. So it's about 50 rockets That's into Galilee. Rock. Israel should try to kill Nasrallah. They should try to kill Nasrallah. That's what they should try to do. Now, this has caused some economic um, surge in some in, in some sectors here, Jacob. As people are running away, the economy, stock market, it, it's it's already it was already shaking. Now that people are running out of there, going into gold, silver, oil, they're all spiking. They yes. lost a few things today, but at least gold was at a at a fifty two week high at twenty four hundred. I think it hit twenty five. But they are heading into gold. Zimbabwe is going into gold. China is going into gold. Uh, I think Zimbabwe has got the currency yeah. that's backed by gold. Russia is going into gold. Everybody's India. heading into gold. India is buying quite a bit. So major central banks, major central banks are heading into gold. So People's Bank of China is just stacking even at a high price. Uh, well, first of all, that tells you that Biden and the Fed have weakened the dollar. Normally, people would be going for the dollar more than... Right. For, so it shows you the damage that the Democrats have done to the dollar. By, but it's not... The, it's the, and by the Democrats, I just don't mean the administration or the, or the Fed. I mean the, the Fed, stupid yeah. people who voted for them. Well, we have inf more inflation is coming, Jacob. Fuel inflation is coming. Uh, we're going to see even more problems uh, as we go through the year. And uh, inflation, yeah, usually when it happens in election year, does not help yeah. the incumbent no. party. <laughs> no, that's yeah. Jimmy Carter. Uh, uh, David, the, uh, the, 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 the inflation numbers came out really, really high. Uh, the inflation is hot. It's not very good. And uh, I think this is part and parcel of what's going on. Uh, in the stock market and in people going into precious gold and, th and, and silver and uh, precious metals. Yeah, it's uh look, I've long time advocated that people should have some gold and some silver just as backup and uh, to have it. If we all know a digital currency is coming, gold and everything, well, there is a day coming where we'll throw it in the street as it'll have no value, but that's pretty far into the uh, tribulation, great tribulation period. But right now, you know, look, if, if they take your accounts and you've got gold and silver or you have some maybe some other supplies around, trading can come back. People have always done that. 
Uh, I'll trade you this uh, pint of white lightning for a couple of them chickens. You know, that's, I know it seems crazy in this day and age, but people are going to have to be inventive, you know, because they are, they, we know this in May, they've got the world trade wants to sign on and, and control everyone's currency, control everything about our accounts, everything. So just people should just be wise and be ready for any sort of big crisis. Look at the stupidity of, of, of the liberals and of the Democrats. Biden today tried to buy youth votes or young people's votes by forgiving another $75 billion in student loans. Oh, man. Where's that money going to come from when you have a $34.5 trillion deficit? What, do you just, it, it grows on trees? They don't realize they're going to pay for this with inflation. Yes. And with hyper deficitism that they're going to have to pay back with interest. The same generation is going to have to pay the interest on the borrowed money to pay their student loans. If, if, but people are too stupid to say it. And these are people who are supposedly went to university. Unfortunately, they went to university but never learned that account. The other thing is in California, you raise the hourly wage by law to people working in fast food joints to $20 an hour. What will that result in? Food deserts. More poor families will not be able to eat fast food or junk food because they're going to have to raise the prices. It's going oh, yeah. to be inflationary. It's going to raise prices. Secondly, it's going to lead to store closures and restaurant closures and layoffs. Absolutely right, Jacob, about the... Oh, uh, don't mind McDonald's what had a $25 meal plan. Oh, man. McDonald's, $25 meal plan. People were kind of upset about it. No, no doubt about it. And, you know, it's the young people that are protesting, uh, not for inflation. They're protesting for... Uh, for terrorism, they're actually protesting for terrorism and going to the Senate and, and and kept the senators from trying to eat food. I guess Bernie Sanders didn't get his soup or something. He was he was complaining about that. Uh, but it's the young people that are being most affected, and yet they're protesting the very thing that will destroy their own lives. Uh, one one fascinating fact was Costco. Costco uh, sold out of gold again. I mean, they, they, as soon as they put it out, it's gone. And and some of the things that they're uh, the reporting is that a lot of other young people, so I, I guess those who are wise, are buying gold, while the rest of the young people, millennials and, and, and Gen Zs, are protesting in the Senate, protesting in high schools and things like that. So it was, it, it's crazy. It, it's it's an attack on the young people that have not been taught how to think rationally of these problems. Oh. And Jacob's talking about the, uh, the the loans are being forgiven, not knowing it's going to cause most, more inflation. They 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 are overjoyed when there's stimulus checks and coming in and stuff like that and what happened in 2020 and all that. So, but not realizing that yes, they they are signing their own destruction economically. But then they complain, I can't live in New York, I can't live in LA, it's too expensive. I can't live here, I can't live there. It's no different. In principle, it is no different than somebody increasing their their credit limit on a credit card running up huge credit card debts that they can't repay <laughs> and thinking that they're better off economically and financially by borrowing yeah. money on their credit card at 30% annual APR or something. This is what happens when you have a school system and even a university system that is there not to educate, but to indoctrinate. That's not right. to tell people how to yeah. think, but what to think. You know, when you talk about this debt, Bloomberg, a liberal organization, but yet they're about money, has been running programs on the sustainability of America's debt. So they want ran over one million, one million trials to see how things work out for us if we as we continue on this unsustainability of America's debt. Well, the models showed that in 88% of the, uh, of the of the models when completed that America 
bankrupts itself. 88% of the models show America fails. So yeah. there's, there's no so, doubt. I mean, no one's been able to uh, avoid this. I mean, this this has been done in history, maybe to this, not to this extent. Uh, so but you maybe, can't and the fact so that maybe, we needed a study to, to figure yeah. that out <laughs> is half the reason why we are going to be bankrupt. I'll tell you that. You, yeah. you, you don't you don't need that kind of study to know that it's unsustainable what we're doing yeah so i don't know if it's a good thing to get trump in there because they'll say ah you republicans did this to us yeah well they're gonna flip it they're gonna flip it. we yeah, have that video flip it. Oh, yeah, you, got is, you, um, yeah. Yeah, you know we've we seen, we seen that what dave is describing we've seen that very kind of stupidity manifested by the late john kane and his campaign advisor carly fiorina Barack Obama was, other than Chris Dodd, was the most guilty culprit in the Senate for what happened in 2008, as Barney Frank was the one guilty in the House. When the lights began flashing on the dashboard with Fannie and Freddie, it was Barack Obama who opposed taking preventative action. Yeah. Instead of having the brain blame Barack Obama in 2008 during the campaign, you see what happened. Campaign of uh, what happened? Fiorina did not have the brain, <clears throat> and McCain did not have the brain. Or if they had the brain, they were really on the side of the Democratic Barney Party. Frank. Was yeah. Barney Frank, yeah. McCain was actually that stupid and incompetent, and Fiorina was actually that stupid and incompetent, which she might have been. Hewlett Packard fired her very justly. She never should have had that job to begin with. It is possible she could have been that stupid. I will grant you that. Yeah. But if they were not that stupid, they must have been in on it. Yeah. Now I'm going to play a video the real quick. Is... These are young young people. Instead of you know talking about the stuff that Jacob and Dave is talking about, they 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 go on a rampage and talk about how Israel is the problem. Here's one example of a young person who, unfortunately, it's just so blind and. So misdirected and all this. You got it, Jay? Can you play it? Uh, give me a second. Oh, oh, well, who has it? Uh, it was oh, it Jay or yeah, Jay? I'll, I'll go to the day. Um, okay, go ahead. Yeah, one of you. I'm sorry. I thought it was Jay who was telling me he had it. Davey has it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Is the screen being shared? Yep. I think those people should resist in every violent way that you could possibly think of. I think October 7th should have been more violent. I think there should have been more hostages. I October 7th should have been more violence, should have been more hostage. This is this is part and parcel of what we teach young people today. Hatred toward, you know, hatred toward Jews, hatred toward Christians, hatred toward the Bible. But yeah, you have to agree with everything else. You have to agree that Islam is it's 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 good for society. You have to agree climate change is this, climate change is that, drugs are good. Man, it, it is a really tall order to try to get young people that have been brainwashed into thinking the most unthinkable stuff. And yet they, they're they personally being destroyed economically. And they, they know it and they, they complain about it on video. The most watched videos on YouTube and Instagram and all those platforms is people getting on and crying and complaining about how expensive things are. And, and look, my heart goes out to them. Some of them are, are genuinely in a very, very difficult position. But how they think, it's my biggest problem, my biggest concern. Yeah, you when you see these women with manicured nails, hair done great, makeup, living in a $2,000 a month apartment and complaining they can't make it, all we want to do, or, or complaining that they have to work 40-hour week. Look, I, I know how hard it is in inflation and, uh, and recession. I lived through six of them in the 70s with Carter and Nixon. And, and you know, I get a job, work six months, psh, gone. Same thing, up and down and up and down. And it was tough, but you you moved. You, you got a second job. You figured it out. You know, you brought in a roommate you know, did things that were smart so you could make a living. It wasn't the best, but it's what you had to do. But now it's better to just cry and complain 
that you can't go to your your manicurist but once a month you know it's, well, it's not even really that, David. I wish it was there. that. It was the fact that they are genuinely realizing that you go to the grocery yeah. store and it costs you a hundred dollars for like one or two bags of groceries, and you know they, they realize they can't afford it. They won't afford it, and now they have to move out. Now they have to go back to living under in their home, and it's just obviously it's unsustainable. But I did want to mention while that is happening, the rich are heading out to the rest of the world. They're heading out to New Zealand. They're heading out to Greece, Malta. A report, the rich are getting second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh passports now because the risk of instability. They're hedging their bets on which country is not going to be affected by a war, by the economy that's tanking, and by, I guess, a, many of them use the word apocalyptic scenario. Uh, Jacob, what do you think? Peter Thiel goes to uh, New Zealand. Um, Eric Schmidt from Google goes to Cyprus, and they're saying we're safe here. Yeah. Well, they're not going to be safe. Cyprus had the first major, major bailouts or bail-ins of banks. 50% of, of bank deposits were confiscated in, 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 in Cyprus, not by the banks, but by the Cypriot government, in effect. Um, New Zealand is simply an economic offshore appendage of Australia, no matter what they tell you. It may culturally be more of a South Pacific nation, than, than a suburb of Australia. But economically, it's tried to Australia. If Australia is in trouble, New Zealand is inevitably going to be in trouble. Um, there are no safe zones other than the wool of the law. That is okay. first of all. Now, they're hedging their bets. They're trying to man maneuver okay, the posturing. But there's no ultimate safety in any economy or any place in the world. Just some, some are safer than others. That's all. Singapore, like Switzerland, like Portugal, Portugal, Malta, Greece, Italy, uh, obviously Costa Rica here in Latin America, some of the islands here in, in the Caribbean. <laughs> the economies of Portugal and Italy are in serious trouble themselves. But but at the same time, Marco, the drumbeat of war is there. New Zealand, Australia, and America are working together to do war games and everything and have invited in the Philippines and Japan come in on this. So we're seeing Japan is increasing their defense force. And China was complaining the other day uh, on news over here, at least, that America is trying to um, make a NATO of South Asia. And right. they're very concerned about that. So you have all these. And so now North Korea is wanting because China is the big bully. You know, you I seen this 200 foot long Coast Guard cutter and and they were intimidating a little Japanese ship that was the Coast Guard. It, it was like a PT boat, you know, and they were intimidating them. And so. You know, they're, China is building these these islands out in the in the seas that have been traditionally Filipino, and they're harassing uh, the fishermen. They they want it all. They have become a big bully over there, and so they see uh, even Taiwan is wanting in on this defense force. So that's interesting how the drumbeats of war are getting louder and louder. No one's talking peace. Yeah, and everywhere. Fear and anxiety up. among the nations, and there's no way out. One last subject before we finish our, our catching up and move on to the questions is, it, while this is happening all over the world, this is what the church is fighting about. The church, the, the, the overall, the body of Christ, is the issue of homosexuality, same-sex marriage, affirming gender, affirming homosexuality, and affirming homosexual marriage, and uh, it's touched, obviously, you got, we've talked about it here. It's touched so many denominations. They split denominations left and right. Uh, I think Jacob's talked about that's going to be one of the issues that's going to split the churches in the last days. It's going to be this issue. It's going to be Israel, of course, and we've seen that already. Uh, ecumenical movement. Uh, uh, Jacob, what was the other one you mentioned? Israel, the ecumenical movement, um, and uh, the authority of Scripture, ultimately. Uh, uh, yeah, and so here you have something that I wanted to talk about this, and there are very much a lot of concerns that these these ideas of gender affirming sexuality, 
and, and the role of marriage and same-sex marriage, you know, it's getting into different denominations. One of the movements that it's, it's basically called the uh, celibate gay movement, celibate, somebody who's going to be celibate, somebody who could be gay. And it's, it's almost like a theology, the celibate gay theology that is being addressed in a lot of places. This is not just one denomination, one movement. One of the ones I was concerned about, a friend of mine contacted me that, uh, that there's been some inroads by that theology within some Calvary chapels. Now, obviously, we know Calvary chapels. Jacob, you have good friends within Calvary Chapel. You used to speak a lot in Calvary chapels. Obviously, Chuck Smith was your friend in the whole movement. And there's a lot of Christians who are in Calvary Chapel, came out of Calvary Chapel, myself included, uh, that, you know, th there is a heartbreak over what has happened since Chuck Smith had died. A uh, dear friend of ours, Paul Smith, um, you know, warned us about this a long time, wrote a book about it. Uh, he went to be with the Lord recently. Uh, but one of the things that has been happening, especially within Calvary Chapels, is this idea of gay celibate theology. And there are conferences, especially at the ones in uh, in Boise, Idaho, that has been hosted by uh, by Calvary Chapel and promoted by Calvary Chapel, the idea that, uh, hey, maybe this guy, Preston Sprinkle, uh, who has a ministry, Preston Sprinkle, uh, maybe the idea of a gay Christian is something that we need to uh, we need to look at, we need to address, we need to legitimize. And um, and that has given people, even within Calvary Chapel, a lot of pause and say, what are we thinking? So, uh, Jacob, the idea of gay celibate theology is basically if somebody can have, can, can not practice homosexuality sexually with the partner, but can live as a homosexual as long okay. as they don't practice it. Okay. This is a denial of what the New Testament teaches about the cross. When I was a teenager, I got strung out on cocaine. In university, cocaine. That cocaine addict is dead. I'm a new creation. I'm not a recovering cocaine addict like the 12-step programs. He's dead. Crucify the old nature. I'm a new creation in Christ. When you say... I still have the old sin, and I'm still what I always was. I'm just not doing it. I'm, uh, you know, I, uh, I was a fornicator. I'm still a fornicator, only I don't sleep around anymore. No, no, if you're a Christian, you're not a fornicator. The fornicator was crucified with Christ. It is a denial of the cross. And this toxin, of Satan, Pastor Preston Sprinkle is an agent of the devil. He may not know it, but that's what he is. First of all, he is a devotee to some degree of N.T. Wright, who denies biblical justification, who denies that our sin was imputed to Christ and his righteousness to us. He's also radically replacement theology. The very fact that he is a devotee of N.T. Wright tells you that he is a follower of heresy and a denier of what the Bible teaches about the cross. He is an agent of Satan. I knew when Calvary Chapel saw the departure of Chuck Smith, this was going to happen. And it has happened. And worse will happen. He is a bad man. Anybody who follows right is a bad man. And anybody who says, you can be a homosexual as long as you don't practice it. That is a lie of the devil. The old creation is crucified. The homosexual is dead if you're in Christ. The lesbian is dead. The cocaine addict is dead. The alcoholic is dead. The fornicator is dead. The criminal is dead. We are to reckon ourselves as new creations, not as old ones who are just not doing it at the moment. It is a lie. It is a denial of the cross. But why wouldn't he deny the cross? He's following N.T. Wright, who denies the cross. This man dispenses the poison of Satan. Tell him I said so, and I'll debate him on front of a camera anywhere. 
See, when you, you give labels like, you know, a gay Christian, you know, I don't think any one of us here would agree that a lying Christian or an adulterous Christian or a thieving Christian, is it's it's a label. I mean, if that's who we were, if that's who we were, and, and I'd sin, and, and Jacob, you've sinned, David, you and I, all of us had a past, and, and that was before the Lord. But I don't want to be known by that anymore. Because I'm a new creation in Jesus. I, I don't, yeah, I don't practice. I don't, with, I don't, go ahead, David. This goes along with the world adding on, you know, you can't just be an American. You have to be a Spanish American. You have to be a Black American. You have to be this. So now we add these labels on, which just multiply and dilute what the message of Christ is. You know, the first thing you're supposed to do, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, go bury the old man and move on and start walking in sanctification. Yes, God saved you in your sin, but he doesn't want you to stay in it. He wants you to start walking in holiness and growing in knowledge and grace of him so he can conform you into the image of his son. And I can't see that Jesus is... is pro-homosexual in the sense that he would allow you to be this mixture that it, you know you're you're either in him or you're not you can't be this this spotted bride that they're trying to make you know you're not an ex-homosexual you're not a christian yeah the the theology and the raw conferences you know emphasizes that there has to be this you know, a, a biblical perspective of culture. Now, they do talk about a lot of things, including sexuality, uh, Palestinian and Israeli war and what's going on there. So I, I'm interested to hear what they have to say. Have a, they have a conference coming up in uh, the end of April in Boise. And I, I want to hear it because they, there's a lot of sessions on young kids. There's actually a session, uh, what we call Generation Z. Uh, between the ages of 15 and 23. And as you know, a lot of my, I have kids that are in that age. And I, I want to know what they're, what they're telling kids about this stuff, because I, I do believe on the one hand, I do believe that the church ought to be addressing this biblically from the pulpit constantly and making sure that we got this straightened out with the gospel, because there's a lot of, there's in, in this case, here's this conference which says, well, maybe we're being too harsh to those who are in the LGBT, we'll never win them unless we make some bridges toward them. And, and I think this is the way that they think that this is the best way to build a bridge is to allow that they just this affirming aspect of a gay Christian, that you can be a faithful Christian, still have homosexual tendencies, but not practice them, which is a big, big part of what they promote in not just here, in a lot of circles. That works so well in the Catholic Church for for years. That you know that that's worked so well with uh, the proclivities of the uh, church in as far as their proclivity for children. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. Let let's 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 definitely do that. I I'm sitting here thinking of Jack Greer, an engineer who gave me the gospel. You need to repent, my mother. You need to repent. You need to repent of your doing heroin, of your sexual, you know, perversions of, of sleeping around with women. People told me the truth because they love me. But we have this love that is being obscured. People want to not lose their children because they're not discipled. They don't know how to talk to their children and let them know they love them. But at the same time, that they need to leave their sin. And so this sounds to me as like they're trying to find a way around discipleship and telling people the truth. In other words, give them a watered down, lukewarm, Laodicean gospel. Yes. Uh, David, go ahead, jump in anytime. time. Oh, yeah. Well, I just keep thinking, you know, what fellowship does light have with darkness? You can't bridge the gap. Well, it's light, dark, you know, and darkness is darkness. And, and here, and look, once you start that, where's the, where does it stop? They're teaching to kids at the moment in country schools in Victoria they, and South Australia, they're teaching them that bestiality is normal, that necromancy is normal. So what, are we going to be going to bridge the gap there too? Yes. You know, I remember um, 10, 12 years ago when Obama was president and, and they, you know, Constitution, you know, they, they, they affirmed this homosexual marriage and they they passed this law. 
And um, and I remember there are arguments from homosexual groups and even friends of mine that are homosexuals that, that would say, well, wh why do you care so much? Just leave us alone. We want to just do our thing and you guys do your thing. And, you know, we don't want to harm anybody. Fast forward to now. Yeah. And you got the gay choir from San Francisco uh, saying, we're going to indoctrinate your children. We're coming after your children. Transgenderism, it's it's gone completely in, in fast mode, hyperspeed. And kids are going to, are being affected by that. So yeah, it wasn't, you're right, David. It wasn't, where does it stop? Well, the line kept moving. Uh, I wanted to ask you this, Jacob. Uh, these are some of the arguments that homosexual groups, LGBT groups, gay Christians, whatever you want to call them, that are, uh, they still go to church and stuff like that. They say, well, the Bible doesn't really deal with the subject of homosexuality. The church has made it the issue. And here's are some of the arguments. I want to see your response on it, because this is some of the, the, the normal things that they throw out to Christians. They say in Genesis 2, where it says the two shall become one flesh. Uh, a husband will, will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. The word one flesh does not imply sexual differences. You could be one flesh, but it doesn't have to be two sexually different people. First of all, the husband shall cling to his wife. Obviously, it is two genders, two sexes, okay? Double X and XY. And the Hebrew term is devik, cling to. You sexually cling to your, your spouse. Um, across the chromosomal definition of male and female. That's exactly what it says in Hebrew. Of course, it doesn't say chromosomal, but it does say male and female. Okay, nekiva. Okay, it says nekiva and geva. Nekiva, female. Um, and devik, cling to, sexually cling to. It does say that. Um, they, they, they're distorting the text, or else they don't know Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. Their, their hang up is the word one flesh does not indicate. Okay, ahad, ahad is a plural oneness. Ahad is always a point. Yahid is the digit one. Ahad yeah. is a plural oneness. Yeah, what they're saying is it doesn't mean sexual differences. It could be a man and a man becoming one flesh. It could be a oh, woman and a woman. Read the text in context. It shall be one flesh, Ahad. It says one flesh. So there is a plural oneness involving the flesh. Male and female. Plural oneness involving the flesh. That is heterosexual. Three, the first command God gives to man is what? Go forth and multiply. Yeah. Find me two lesbians or two homosexuals that can have a baby. These people are scripture-twisting liars who are going to hell, almost certainly. It's almost impossible for people like that to repent and believe the gospel. Uh, here's another one, Jacob. Romans 1 is condemning excessive lust, not same-sex relationships. What Romans one are you reading? Men with men, women with women. It's what they say is it's that, that's it's lust, not not homosexual relationships. Let me read it. I can read it in Greek if you'd prefer, but most people probably would prefer I only read it in English. Okay, let's look at what it says. For well, God gave them over to degrading passions. For well, their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way, men also abandoned the natural function of the woman and burdened their desire towards one another. Men with men, committing indecent acts and receiving in their own person the dual penalty of their error. I assure you that is a very, very close and accurate translation of what it says in Greek. Here's another one. The biblical writers didn't know anything about sexual orientation, they say. They only wrote from their cultural perspective. Uh, Romans chapter 1 claims to be the word of God. They're writing from a divine perspective. They're not writing from their own. So you're saying that the Bible is only the word of man. It's not the word of God. God certainly does. No. Here's another one. The word homosexual was added to the Bible in 1946. 
Prior to that, that word homosexual did not include in English. No, there was a word was effeminate. Mean. There was a word effeminate that was a description of them that we translate to homosexual. That is true, but that's a translation issue. It's nothing to do with what's in the original text. And, and again, Romans 1 makes it clear. It is what we would call homosexual in English. All right, because Jewish, uh, because Jesus' Jewishness and his hermeneutics, uh, this is how we interpret same-sex prohibitions. It was based on the Jewish uh, hermeneutics, not on the Christian hermeneutics. So Paul is misinterpreting the scripture or he's teaching error in Romans 1? Well, this that's is, where it goes to, right? That's where it goes to, right? That, 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 that was Jesus. Now that no, Paul it's, has... true. it's true the Hebrew scriptures condemn it. It is a capital crime in the, in the Hebrew scriptures. Right. And the Torah is a capital crime. But the New Testament was saying that it was evil and unnatural. Here's another one. God's acceptance of Gentiles mirrors how we should accept LGBT people today. On what biblical basis? God does not condemn Gentiles. He welcomes them to salvation. But in Romans chapter 1, it says homosexuals, if they don't repent, are going to be given over to their depravity and spend eternity in hell. Traditional view seeing, of marriage is... Oh, go ahead, David. I'll, I'll come back to that one. Go ahead. We're seeing people being turned over in their mind when you can't figure out if you're a male or a female. And then they go even further because they want us to confirm their thinking and their error with that we got to go along with it. I mean, I don't have to agree with you that you're not a male or not a female. I will hold to the truth. And that's what Christians should be holding to is the truth. And even to the science, it shows us there's two genders, male and female, just as the Bible says. How about this one? The traditional view of marriage, it's harmful toward those who have same-sex attraction. Of course it is. That which is natural is harmful to that which is unnatural. <laughs> Just as that which is unnatural is harmful to that which is natural. Yeah, I, I think their point is that we shouldn't teach the traditional view of marriage because it, it, it offends them and it's harmful toward them. Well, okay, then we shouldn't teach their view, because it offends us and it's harmful to us. I know. Where does it stop, right? That Davey was talking about it. Where does it stop? Okay, final one. Is this an issue of we're going to have to agree to disagree with Christians who actually believe that you could be a gay Christian? So there are those who agree and there are those who disagree. You're, a, you're either never a Christian to begin with or you're a backslidden Christian. Uh, no, I'm talking about those who affirm it. If you affirm it, those Christians who affirm it, are they still Christians? And should we just agree to disagree with those who affirm it? Okay, since, they affirm, uh, oh, you could be a gay Christian. If somebody affirms you can be a gay Christian, they are either not a Christian or they're a backslidden Christian. Or deluded. It, they, it comes been down to themselves. It comes okay. down to the authority. Who you know, is scripture the authority or not? That's correct. And what I see a lot of these arguments is the fact that the Bible is not authoritative. The Bible has made mistakes or are, are basically full of mistakes and, and it's therefore not infallible anymore because it's all these dis, all these agreements and disagreement arguments are basically man-made. Well, you know, man can, yeah. man can write it, man can rewrite it. Yes, well, Satan set the stage for this through his servant, um, what was it, McLaren, Brian McLaren? Oh, Brian McLaren, yeah, years ago, yeah. He had a homosexual son, and McLaren said, we should declare a five-year moratorium on debating homosexuality and same-sex marriage until we reach an agreement. And if we haven't reached a consensus in five years, we should declare another five-year moratorium oh, on even man. discussing it. And then the church should decide. What he is saying is the scripture is not the word of God. It is the word of the church. The mm -hmm. church wrote it, therefore the church can rewrite it. Yeah, then no McLaren turns around and performs the so-called wedding ceremony for his son and his son's husband. 
So let's yeah, let this cancer come on the way to hell. Thrive. So let this cancer come into the body of Christ, thrive. Don't do anything about it for five years. And then when it's still thriving, then give it five more years to even eat up more of the church and the truth. And otherwise, and his son would not be able to get married to his husband. Right. Yeah. And he was from the ceremony. Yeah, absolutely, Jacob. And uh, I remember Rob Bell going uh, on the Oprah show. I remember Rob Bell talking about that the church is going to have to deal with this and the church will come eventually will come and accept it. And boy, since that time, and this is what, 2008, 2009, yes. 2010, it, we had just seen the floodgates open where now you have you know, conferences. I'm not talking about this one in general, but just in uh, this one in particular. In general, you have conferences that cater to the fact that you have to Affirm it. You have to do it. And, and denominations have split. Baptists have split. Uh, Methodists have split. I mean, it, it's just unbelievable how it's spread. And now, of course, we got transgenderism. Now we have to affirm it. Gay, same-sex marriage, uh, bisexuality. I mean, it's just on and on. And, and as a friend of mine put it, you know, the biggest issues of, of, of this uh, Mr. Sp uh, Preston Sprinkle here is, one, is the acceptance of soft-pedaling soft acceptance of gay Christians. And also, his uh, he doesn't have an orthodox view of hell. That, that there are there are some problems with his view on eternal hell. So uh, he has leanings towards, or at least tiltings towards annihilationism. But correct. if he's the NT right, he sh he should have no credibility anyway. Jacob, do you know what N.T. Wright believes about sexuality and marriage? I mean, I don't know if he talks about it or if he's if he's come out pro or or affirming. I, I don't know if he's in that influential. In that he, category, he would not speak against such things. Mm, that's interesting. I remember, and I have Calvary Chapel friends of mine that are pastors, or young pastors, and they uh, one of the things that they told me years ago is N.T. Wright has been making a big inroads with a lot of the Calvary Chapel pastors. Yep. Uh, he was making it, a lot of them getting their book, and I think the book that they really were sold on was the Resurrection. I guess he apparently I never read it. Apparently, wrote a good book on the Resurrection, and that brought them into. That he's a scholar so everybody needs a scholar i suppose so that was their scholar somebody else got another scholar and then the next book that he that they brought in was the uh what was it called the re looking at paul or reevaluating paul i forget the name of the book but it was to do with paul and yeah. uh they were, they were re looking at how paul had written some of these um some of these letters and so it, it was again a re new perspective on paul I'm sorry, David. Uh, something like new perspectives on Paul. Yes, that was it. Yeah, new perspective on Paul. That Paul never talked about personal salvation. It was just sort of corporate ideas. And you know, and you I am no fan of John MacArthur, as most of you know. Yeah. But what John MacArthur said about Nigel Wright was absolutely correct. Mm. You can get the video of John MacArthur. I agree with everything John MacArthur said concerning N.T. Wright, and I don't it, always agree with John MacArthur. Is he uh is is he Anglican, Jacob? Anti right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's some bishop of something. I don't know where it is, but uh, right. so, if I may add just one yeah. one small little thing. Um, one yeah. thing that we miss, especially I would I would definitely go to Preston about is the thing that's under attack when when you talk about homosexuality is the image of God. We were all created mm -hmm. in the image of God. In fact, on top of that. There are thousands of generations of people that practice heterosexual relationships to get us to this point where we're alive. And even before that, God created. So when you defy biology, when you defy the natural way that God gave us to reproduce, you defy the fact that his image is replaced. And now you're worshiping a different image. You're worshiping Correct. the image of your own making Correct. going against the nature that God gave us. Correct. That's, that's, Roman, that's the attack. Correct. That's exactly, the image of God exactly on earth. Correct. That's why Romans talks about worshiping the creature instead of the creator. James is exactly correct. That is why Romans um, connects idolatry with homosexuality. That's James right. That's right. So just to finish that, that subject, and we got to move on to our questions and backstage is, uh, do you you guys think he's trying? I mean, what he says, he's trying to bridge the conversation with the LGBT community.
to the point where they will listen. That's what he's trying to say, or that's what he says he's trying to do. Um, and, and, and some people disagree with them. Some people agree with them. Some people think he's pandering. Some people think he's trying to do the right thing because they will never listen to anybody else other than those who maybe come to the LGBT community with with a, a softer approach because you know we have to love them we have to accept them and it's a it's a it's a really interesting thing that the church is actually having this discussion when it's been really clear in scripture but i'll leave it up to you guys that argument must ignore what it says again in romans natural reason tells them it is wrong they are not arguing against you or your theology they're arguing against natural reason. They're arguing against biological reality. That's what they're arguing against. So that argument is, 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 is an irrelevant one. You have to be told it's wrong. You tell a drug addict shooting heroin is wrong. You tell an alcoholic getting drunk is wrong. You tell a homosexual same-sex relationships are wrong. You call sin, sin. Speak the truth in love, but God's word never compromises truth in the name of love. Because of love, it tells the truth. This stuff is death, and it will kill you. Very good. David, any thoughts before we uh, close out catching up? I mean, by its very nature, he's compromising with sin. You compromise with sin, you end up with no gospel, and people get and people end up in hell. It's, it's what Paul says: in the last days, there will be teachers who will he will teach, having been deceived themselves. Yes, deceived. I, I guess when you compromise on, on on the doctrine of hell, and I'm not saying everybody is, but I'm saying when you do that, I guess it is. Again, it is convenient to start calling sin and soft peddling it yes, because it's yeah. not, it's, it doesn't have eternal consequences. It, it's, right. it's an interesting thing that goes hand in hand. Plus, I am interested to find out what they are telling young people about Israel and the Palestinian and the war and stuff like that, because it, it is sort of an interesting cultural, uh, you know, melee that they're putting together uh, to just to, to talk about different culture things. And that's one of them. And uh, I don't know if hell is going to be one of them, but the view on hell. But, what but you that... is a departure from the beliefs and convictions of Chuck Smith and the founders of Calvary Chapel. You're yeah. seeing a departure from it. And like Brian Broderson, he's one of the people leading that departure away from what Chuck Smith believed. It's the old saying, give the devil a toehold. Next thing he knows, he got a foothold and then a stronghold. That's correct. Yeah. Where it's headed. Well, we're going to see. I'm sure there's other people going to be talking about it, especially when the conference approaches. And uh, uh, we'll see more. I think uh, Jay and I had talked about maybe interviewing some uh, some believers who have come out of homosexuality. And that's coming up, especially as we head into the month of June. And, Absolutely. Uh, a lot Talk of that. To them. What do people say that of homosexuality? truly say that of it say. The ones I know hate it. They will denounce it the way I will denounce, denounce cocaine addiction. Yeah, very good. So we will we will leave that up to when you know we interview them and they can talk to us and let us know. They have great testimonies. So praise the Lord for that. So all right. God bless you guys. We will see you on backstage. We got some questions coming up. And uh boy, if you have questions about what Jacob and and David and Jay and David were talking about about you know can a, can a christian be a gay christian you know th those kinds of things if you have questions about that please send us in send it in we'll love to answer them uh god bless you guys thanks for staying up with us and we'll see you on backstage in just a couple of minutes Welcome back to Backstage, the part of the program where our tech overlords do not want us to talk about. But we got a lot of questions today for Jacob. So um, actually, the first one, it's not for Jacob, it's actually for Jay. Jay, where are you going to be at in Jamaica? Uh, 
first I will be in Kingston, then the Blue Mountains, then Montego Bay, Negril, and I plan to have Bible studies every every night that I'm there. And then the one the one date is uh, April twentieth. We are looking for a venue in Halfway Tree or downtown Kingston at a, a hotel or a conference room for we're hoping about like thirty to forty people turn out. That's what we're planning on. That's awesome. May the Lord bless it. Amen. So that's a, that's the easiest question we have. Who will live in the millennium, Jacob? Who will live in the millennium? Will the rapture saints be there? There'll be two kinds of people in the millennium. Those who are raptured and resurrected at the return of Christ at the parousia, okay, they will have bodies akin to the bodies that Jesus had in his resurrection. The kind of body that Jesus had in his resurrection, it was his body, but it had supernatural powers and so forth. We, the believers who are alive now, were those who have gone to be with the Lord and will be reunited with their bodies. They will be one kind of people. The others will be those who survived the last seven years of history, the 70th week of Daniel and their descendants. They will be like us now, biologically, except they will have the longevity of antediluvian man. They will live to be incredible ages. So those will be the two kinds of people who will be here in the millennium. There will also be a distinction between Jewish and non-Jewish believers before eternity, and in eternity, there won't be any distinction. But in the millennium, there will be a special inheritance for believing Gentiles who will rule the nations under Christ, and a special uh, apportionment for believing Jews who will rule biblical Israel under Christ. Of course, Israel will be expanded geographically bigger than it is now. It will be like it was in the days of David and Solomon. But Believing Jews will rule under Christ, biblical Israel, as it will be then, and believing non-Jews will rule the nations under Christ. The apportionment. All right. But they'll Great. all come together at the Feast of Tabernacles. Yep, Zechariah chapter 12, Revelation 20, get, get a hold of that. Yes. Is it biblical permissible, Jacob, for a Christian to know, donate their bodies, to donate their body for medical research once they have gone home? What scripture supported, if not any? The scriptures do not address such an issue. It doesn't really matter. I do not like the idea of cremation, but I don't have a problem if another Christian chooses it. Some of the early Christians were burned alive to ashes when they were martyred in Ephesus. They're going to be resurrected the same as, as we are. Um, it doesn't really matter what happens to your physical body once you fall asleep in the Lord. Uh, it's going to be resurrected good as new and even better. So it doesn't really matter. There's no biblical prohibition on donating your organs to medical research. Very good. Jacob, do you think the news of Iran's imminent attack on Israel is Ezekiel 37 and 38 war? And could that bring the Antichrist on the scene? And it being a is it a shadow or foreshadow type of the final battle of Armageddon? If there is an Ezekiel 38 and 39 war, it will be a shadow of the ultimate Gog and Magog war at the end of the millennium. The scripture says that. Okay, that this is for sure. There is a debate whether Gog and Magog. And Ezekiel 38 and 39 are the same. I personally do not believe they are the same. Some, however, do, but I'm not dogmatic about them. Um, there is nothing in Ezekiel 37, 38, or 39 that would associate it with the rise of Antichrist. Antichrist is more associated with the battle of the Valley of Jehoshaphat and the Battle of Armageddon, Armageddon. Very good. Uh, Jacob, what's uh, what's Jacob's view on losing your salvation? We have other tapes explaining this. We are eternally secure in Christ if we remain in Christ. Unrepentant backsliders are not in Christ any longer. In order to have that assurance, they need to repent. 
Now, having said that, God does not save people to lose them. The good shepherd will leave the 99 and go after the one. The Lord will pursue backsliders. That's right. To the point where, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul was willing to give a backslider involved in the grossest of immorality over to Satan to destroy his flesh, that he would repent rather than spend eternity in hell. The Lord will go after backsliders to get them back, and that may that will entail bringing judgment into their life if necessary. However, if you put on the garments of salvation, a life jacket, and stay in the lifeboat, the body of Christ, you're going to be saved. If you take the life jacket off and dive overboard, you better be a real good swimmer. Nobody has made it yet. Stay in Christ, and you will be eternally secure. You don't have to think about it. Very good. Jacob, can Biden sign the agreement with the WHO to give power over U.S. citizens during a crisis without Congress consent? To a limited degree, if it's a treaty, Senate must confirm all treaties. But don't forget, Barack Obama made a deal with Iran without Senate confirmation. <laughs> that now, is true. The only thing is that can be repealed by the next president, which Mr. Trump did. So to a limited degree, yes. In my opinion, it should not be allowed at all. I don't think it's really constitutional, but the powers that be say it is. They've done it. Very good. Jacob, could the Antichrist or the false prophet identify themselves as philo-Semitic, seeing that he would allow the Jews to have their own well, temple? He will, he will of necessity identify himself as philo-Semitic. Yeah, and allow them to worship and sacrifice. So, out of necessity. Yes. All yes. right. In order to deceive, yes. I heard that. I heard of the claim that modern Israel is not the real Israel. Jacob, can you address that, please? We've addressed it many times. It's absolute rubbish. Isaiah chapter 11 makes it clear that the Jews would be regathered to that land twice. At the time of Isaiah's writing, the first time happened after the Babylonian captivity, and the second time is now. It only happens twice, and it's happened. Jesus made it clear Jerusalem would be trampled down by the feet of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is completed. Zechariah 12, Matthew 23, Luke 21, the Jews must not just be back in Israel, they must be back in Jerusalem. Those who are telling you that are either ignorant or they're false teachers. Very good, Jacob. Some Christian apologetics claim that the Gog, uh, the Gog of Magog is the ultimate antichrist. What's your understanding on that? I personally don't believe it, but can't prove them wrong for now. It goes back to the table of nations in Genesis 10. There are, however, people who believe that they are specific demons. They are specific demons. There are people who believe Gog and Magog are specific demons, not just nations. There yes. are people who believe that. But I do not believe Gog and Magog are the Antichrist and false prophet, no. Okay. How do you guys feel about Melania hosting log cabin LGBTQ Republicans on April 23rd again. I guess it's going to happen again. And Trump is waffling a, a bit on the abortion issue and the in vitro fertilization, the Alabama stand uh, on embryos as people. Donald Trump criticized Governor DeSantis and the Florida legislation of a six-week ban on abortion. Yeah. He said it was too extreme. Last week, he also made it clear that even if there was a right to life bill put on his desk in the Oval Office, um, banning all abortion unless medically necessary to save the life of the mother, he wouldn't sign it. Mm. That is one of the reasons I, having voted for Donald Trump twice, and I'm not telling anybody else to or not to, I myself will not be able in good conscience to vote for him. He held a homosexual gala at Mar-a-Lago, his wife is having fundraisers with homosexuals. It's politically motivated. I understand politically why they're doing it, but I don't think they should do it. Uh, the one thing that Carter ever said, that I had, one of the very few things I've ever agreed with Carter, uh, well, I'm sorry, with um, 
Clinton about was don't ask, don't tell. Mm. Very and, good. Yeah, Bill Clinton. Don't ask. Biden should be reelected. I'd obviously rather have Donald Trump than Biden, but because of the very issues you raise, I myself cannot, in good conscience, vote for him. But I'm not. Yeah, telling- he's been. He's been saying, and I noticed Carrie Lake over there too, is that they're seeing that it wasn't that the bad picks that Trump had done for. Uh, losing the election, uh, the last midterm, but it was actually the abortion issue. And I think the whole Republican are, uh, they're all going to compromise on this, Jacob, yes, now. They want to distance themselves from the state, Except for states that are, have good leadership. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, can a, war between I- yeah, can a war between Iran and Israel be the new goat and the ram? No, the goat is definitely absolutely identified with Greece, be it literally what we call in Hebrew Yavan, Greece, or Greece as the uh, corporate representation of Europe. Very good. Air Canada now is using biometric imaging at the gates to board a plane. Are you finding this with other airlines, Jacob, when you travel? I have seen increased use in Britain for some years of security cameras all over the place. Um, Britain is the most progressive policies of the use of security cameras being posted in public of, of, of any country in the world. It's almost been almost a, like a, a test laboratory for doing it. Um, I do think other airlines are going to do it, yes. I do. Um, and I think I that- could- Possible LL has been doing it for some time. Um, I think uh, I'm seeing some stuff like uh, the TSA has more pictures of me than um, than even my uh, family. You know, it's like they're taking your picture here, there, everywhere. Um, they're moving towards where your face will be the um, the identity for getting on planes. And Nashville, they have the most advanced. One, they take your picture instantly. They say that it's deleted uh, 30 seconds later. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just can't believe it, but they say it. I know, I know. know. I'm, I'm sorry. So, it, uh, so you're seeing that uh, uh, in Japan, they have a line for people face, face. Uh, what do they call it? Face uh face secure or something like that so if you if you've got your biometrics there your face id you just go through that line there's no line um so uh clear you're seeing all sorts of operations and tsa is pushing this and uh we're also seeing more and more countries are requiring travel issue authority documents that you have to prove who you are with them before you even leave your country so and start your way there so it's it's all changing they're all getting ready for the day where that you can't buy nor sell yeah that's right uh jacob do repentance back repentant backsliders have a lesser place in heaven not <laughs> thoroughly depends on how faithful they are once they repent okay very good Iran will be at the UN meeting on April 18th to vote Palestine in as a UN member. If this passes, it automatically gives the PA or Palestinian statehood while carving it out of Israel without Israel's consent. Will this be a continuation of Kushner's Abraham Accord uh, being confirmed, uh, being the covenant, but is confirmed with the many? Daniel 9:27. I'd have to think about that. But it would certainly be a move in that direction without necessarily reference to Mr. Trump's son-in-law. It would be a move in that direction. Okay, very good. Thank you for sending that. Australia pushing it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sending that. Whoever sent that in. I didn't know that there were Iran will be at the UN. I didn't know that part. So uh, thank you for sending that. Whoever sent it. Thank you. Uh, Jacob, did you watch the film Golda and Helen Marin? Oh, sorry. Golda with Helen Marin. Was it faithful to the truth? Many parallels today with what's going on in Gaza. It was broadly faithful to the truth. 
in any film, there's going to be a certain amount of poetic license, but the essential historical details were true. All right, very good. Well, that's all the questions we have. Jacob, you did so well today. You ran right through them. That was very, very, very good, very succinct. And thank you guys for sending the questions. They're amazing. Good stuff. You know, we learn from the questions that uh, sometimes we can't cover yeah. every single subject. We learn from it. So we so much appreciate those who send the questions in, those who watch, those who listen. Uh, Jacob Prash, any final things going into this weekend? Uh, it's not Friday evening here in the West Coast. Iran is supposed to have this window that they're going to attack. It, it doesn't seem like uh, nothing happened on Wednesday, nothing happened on Thursday. I'm not saying it won't happen. Uh, but what are we to look for? And some encouragement for believers. There's a lot of panic in the in the economy, a lot of panic in the world because of war and rumors of war. Final thoughts. I can see upheavals happening in the Middle East, but I will see upheavals happening in Europe, in the United States, and not least of all in the Far East. Upheavals are going to increase for the rest of the year into next year. And these upheavals are going to begin to make people reconsider things they've always seen as normative. The new normal will be abnormality. The new normal will be abnormality. And I can see this year and into next year being the transition point in the post-COVID era. Abnormality will be the new normal, if that makes any sense but I don't think it's going to be limited to any one country. However, keep your eyes on the Middle East because that's the one that is most prophetically significant. I would also beg people to pray that God removes Biden and the liberal Democrat administration. I'm not saying to vote for Mr. Trump. I'm not voting for Mr. Trump. God can do anything. He can do anything. Please pray for America. Biden is putting America on the path to God's judgment. With the homosexual agenda, with his favoring Iran and its proxies against Israel, trying to prevent Israel from destroying Hamas, trying to force a peace on Israel that will abandon the hostages, in effect, no matter what he says. But also, there's another element that we've not talked about um, much. Um, you are now seeing, in a post-Gaza war situation, Hamas and Fatah coming into conflict again. Watch for conflict between Fatah, Arafat's organization, Hamas. Remember, there has not been elections in the Gaza Strip since 2006. Why? Why in nearly 20 years has there not been elections? Because it is likely that Hamas would win. The government of Abbas, the Palestinian Authority, that is Hamas, no, that is Fatah, Fatah, has no democratic legitimacy. It has no democratically elected legitimacy. It is not a representative government. It is not operating in accordance with Oslo agreements. It is a government that is there at the point of a gun. It is not a democratically legitimate government there by the voting majority of the people. They can't allow it. So again, the question becomes, Hamas calls for Israel's destruction. Who are they going to negotiate a two-state solution with? Well, they should negotiate with Fatah, the Palestinian Authority, but they're not a legitimate government. They have no electoral mandate from the people. They're a government that's been there without an election for pushing 20 years. But that doesn't matter to Biden or Obama or these people. But it does matter to anybody with a reasonable mind. Remember, no matter what happens in the UN, or with Biden, or with Cameron in London, none of that. Hine lo yanum v'lo yishan shomer Israel. He who keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. 
Jacob, if you don't mind, it's been requested by some. Could you please uh, pray with us or pray with the audience and us uh, for the peace of, of Israel and Jerusalem? That verse, pray for the peace of, of Jerusalem, is Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. It means inquire into the fullness of Israel. Inquire into. It's like interrogatory. They shall prosper who love thee. How is Israel doing? Well, inquiring into the welfare of Israel, it is spiritually bankrupt. It denies its Messiah. The religious Jews are an antichrist religion that denies their Messiah. The abortion rate in Israel eclipses the number of Jewish children murdered by Adolf Hitler. However, the number of Jews coming to faith in Jesus is growing. So when I inquire into the welfare of Jerusalem or the fullness of Jerusalem, the only bright spot I see is that more Jews, not huge numbers, but increasing numbers, and some Arabs are coming to a saving faith in Jesus. I'll pray in Hebrew and in English. Avinu Markenu, Anakhtu Ratsim, Lavo Bifnecha, Lihit Palel, Lechalel Atcha, Avagam Ken Nevekesh Mimcha, Shalom Shaha Yavoli Israel Aval Shalom Shaha Hashalom Shanaknu Yahulim Rakli Kabel Al Yede Yeshua Ha Adon Hu Shlomenu Nitahed Hu Haritsui Shalanu Et Mechitsat Hairba Haras Hu Shlomenu Nitahed Beshmo Yeshua Anaknu Midpalalim Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you to praise you and to thank you. But we come before you to ask, Lord God, that Israel will know your peace. And we know that your peace is that peace that comes from your son. He is our peace. We shall be one. He is our reconciliation. The wall of partition is broken down. He is our peace. We shall be one. In his wonderful name, Jesus, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. And Marco had to go, so I wish you all a wonderful week in the Lord. God bless you, and thank you for watching Catching Up with Jacob. Hello, and thank you for watching Moriel TV. There are so many things that are happening at Moriel Ministries worldwide, from the Philippines to Japan to India to Africa, and back to Europe and the United States, so many of our brothers and sisters are spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to this lost world. We are so thankful for your prayers. God has been faithful and has blessed us in so many ways. If you'd like to partner with our efforts abroad and at home, please take a moment to click the link in the description and help us as the Lord leads you. Thank you very much and God bless.